Hello, Leanne. Hey, Joe. Um, Leanne, I think that people want to know why you became a lawyer. Why, why did I become a lawyer? Well, when I was in high school, I wanted to become one of three things. A speech pathologist, because I had had speech pathology myself for many, many years as a young person, and I had a very lazy S. Or I wanted to be the first female prime minister, or a lawyer. Yeah, well, that can't happen anymore. Yeah, well, that can't happen anymore. Someone beat me to it. And so this was back in the 1970s, right? And so I thought, you know what? I think I'm much more suited to working with adults than with children and working with adults who need me more from an emotional point of view. I did legal studies in high school and loved it. And I also had the most amazing opportunity in high school. One of the nuns at the school that I attended had a sister-in-law who was a female barrister. She took me on work experience for three days. There were very few female barristers at uh, Owen Dixon West. And- Which court? Well, she did commercial work so and business work. Supreme Court. Supreme so court. Supreme Court and County Court. But I also sat in her chambers and watched her for three days. And everything from the amount of people who came in and sought her counsel, her, guardian, her, her, her guidance, as well as going for lunch and people saying hello to her, I thought, you know what? I want I your life. I want to be in those shoes. <laughs> and so what did I do? I went back to school. I dumped the boyfriend because he was getting in the way of my, wow. my aspirations. Get out of Poor my guy life. thought that I was dumping him because he had a mullet. No, because I had career aspirations. Yeah, right, yeah. And I focused on my studies and got into Melbourne Uni Law and Arts. And so you got into law, why choose family law? Well, I chose family law because I realised as I was doing my law degree that I loved the story of human beings more than anything else. And there were two ways to get the story of human beings, crime and family. And doing crime was very satisfying but I found it very difficult representing people who, and keeping them out of jail, when really I thought they should go into jail. And I also had a, 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 a one-off case where someone um, told me that they were not guilty of the offence. We spent three weeks in the county court defending the, the matter. And when he was found gu guilty by the jury, and I went downstairs with our barrister to, to see if we could get him bail, he told me he did it and he was gonna take everybody else down with him that did it with him. And I thought, I've just spent a really big chunk of my life helping you and you believed. because I believed him and he lied and I just thought, oh, this is not satisfying enough for me. Wow. I was still doing family law, of course, at the time because I'd, I'd done that from the day dot and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna follow what I love and family law is what I love. I love people's story, I love people's story. Um, you know, Joe, when people say to me, what do you do for a living? I don't say I'm a family lawyer. What do I say? I make people happy, okay? And that's why I love family law. Fantastic. Right. So, Joe, why did you study law? Um, well, why did I study law? Well, because when I did it in, in those days, Form 5, Form 6, I loved it. absolutely loved law, but I loved Australian history. I loved everything. I was either going to be an accountant or a lawyer. I didn't think I was good enough to be a lawyer or to get the grades to get into law, but I did, thank you to the help of my uh, Year 12 Legal Studies teacher. Um, and when I studied at uni, absolutely loved it. And I fell into family law in particular, because when I did family law with uh, Neville Turner, I um, just absolutely loved it. And I just, when I did it, I thought, this is the law I want to practice. So when I left uni, my sole aim was to practice family law. Um, and although I did uh, my articles, as it was then, in a general practice doing conveyancing and all, everything. Family law as well? No family law at all. Okay. Not one family law file at all. The, the firm didn't do any family law. If they did, I never saw any of it. But my aim was to, as soon as I did my articles and finished, to go and practice family law. So as soon as I finished my articles and got admitted, I started looking for a job at family law and I've done family law ever since. So, and loved it. And still love it? And still love it almost 40 years later. That's it, yeah. that's it. I think you find your, the thing that makes you tick and makes you excited every day and makes you feel like you're coming to work but you're doing more than work. It's a profession that you're proud of and something you feel uh, is very fulfilling but also you're giving back to uh, the clients really. So well, I love to see the growth. I love to see the growth in people when they come in. Yeah. It's the most challenging, it's the most 
um, harrowing part of their lives that they're, they're, yeah. all their dreams have come to an end. Yeah. Um, and they've come to they're see us. They're in grief, aren't they? Yeah, they come yeah. to see us. They don't know what we're going to present. And I say to them when they walk in and you buy, you know, you've taken one of the biggest steps you're going to take, which is you've come to get some advice. Yeah. Um, you've come to get some guidance. Yeah. Hopefully in half an hour, um, you'll be able to walk out of here knowing a bit more about where this might end up. It's going to take time. Um, and then with those clients, you work over a period of months, some you work over a period yeah, of years. Yeah. And to see their growth and their development throughout that time, um, and they walk out, you know, at the end of that process, completely different, some repartner, um, and then just, you just say, you know, that, that devastation, you can get over it. It just shows you the strength of humans and human nature that you can just keep battling on and get through it, and get in through any yeah. adversity. And as you know, at the moment, there's lots of adversity and challenges all over the world. And, and us humans, we're remarkable to just, just keep going and just keep batting on regardless. And yeah, like, seeing the positive. That's what I love to see in people, yeah. Yeah. Growth that, that nature. It's, a, it's very much privilege, isn't it? The people come in and they tell you things. They've told no one Nobody else. else no one in their family, not even their best friends. They come in, they've never met you, and they trust in you enough to tell you everything about their lives that they need to tell you. And trusting us to give them an opinion that will move them forward and get them through this part. I find that privilege overwhelming and wonderful. And th I think that's what keeps me excited about the work yeah. and to find a solution. Yeah, they can find us and tell us what everything. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes it's very harsh the way we deliver our response. I'm probably much harsher than you in terms of the response that, in a sense, I wouldn't say harsh, but I'm quite blunt. You're probably uh, a li bit, bit softer with your pen, I think, than I am, whereas I'm very, would you say? Matter of fact. Matter of fact, in yeah. the way that I would deliver my advice to clients. So give me the information. This is the advice I'm going to deliver to you. I'm happy to be strategic with them, but I really feel it's my responsibility to tell them what they need to hear, not what they want to hear, to tell them what they need to hear, not be their friend. Uh, in a sense, they don't need another friend. They need someone who's going to be quite blunt in the delivery of the information. Um, but, you know, everybody has different style, and all their clients are different too in their personalities. Really?